Well, good morning, everyone. We made it to midweek, and I'm really excited about uh, coming into Palm Sunday, beginning uh, the Passion Week of Jesus as we head into Easter. I hope that you have made every uh, possible uh, method or plan to invite one person to come back uh, into a church service. There's a lot of people out there that do not have a church. There's a lot of people that have determined that their, their church is not where they're going to go back to or whatever. Now, that's happened to us where people have determined they're not going to come back to the journey. And so we're looking for those people that have been de-churched or have no church. And we're hoping that those people will make their way to the journey where they can hear the gospel. They can be reminded of who they are in Christ. They can be reminded of who they could be in Christ. And, and so I want to encourage you to make sure that your invites are going out. Uh, we, uh, we want to see God's house full. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Matthew 18 is where we're going to be this morning. And this is a sensitive subject. It's very difficult for me because I, I've been on the receiving end of this uh, this year, uh, this past year. Some of it due to how I've handled uh, our COVID-19 response. Some of it has been things I didn't even know were happening. And, uh, and so... It's really tough, and I want to be very careful with it, so I'm just going to leave it at that for what's happened to me. But let me just read to you, starting in chapter 18 of Matthew, verse number 21. It says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? And Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. And so what Jesus is doing there is he's saying, hey, look, there's a, there's a number that I, I want you to lose count on. I don't want you to go, okay, he's finally hit that 70 times 7 number. Finally, now I can be unforgiving. I think he's trying to help us see the difference between what God has done for us and what we're being asked to do here on earth. And he breaks up into uh, the parable of the un, uh, unforgiving servant. I'm just going to read it quickly to you and get us to the last verse of the chapter. And in verse number 23 says, Therefore uh, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun reckoning, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. And for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. And the servant therefore fell down and worked Worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Okay, so I want you to put yourself in that role before God. You are this servant that could never pay and would never have a chance. And the God of the universe, through his son Jesus, has forgiven you. Now let's go on to, uh, to the next part. Uh, but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after uh, that he had called him and said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that, that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. This is it right here, verse 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. And so what I'm trying to say to you is, is that whatever one person might do at one time uh, is nothing compared to what God has had to forgive of us. And so I want to encourage you. Maybe you feel like you were wronged along the way, mishandled, mistreated, and maybe you really were. The Bible tells us that that we are to forgive that trespass, that taking advantage of, that hurt. 
just like God forgave all your sin through Christ, his son. And so if you have made some moves based on a hurt, if you have done some things that are based on an unforgiving spirit, forgiveness is due. God says forgive. He says up to 70 times seven, the same offense happening over and over and over again. Sometimes we hold people accountable for one thing when their whole life with us has been something totally different. But in that one moment, they're not going to be forgiven. They're going to be, I mean, I, I can't deal with this person anymore. That is some of the worst unforgiveness there is. And he's talking about thy brother. That means fellow family member. That means fellow church member. If you've been on the receiving end of, of a terrible unforgiveness, it hurts. But if you are the one that is causing the unforgiveness, you're hurting those around you. They're absorbing your unforgiveness and they're giving it out. And so I want to encourage you, today's the day. Unload that unforgiveness. Let that person off the hook. Forgive them. And I guarantee you things will, in your heart, be much smoother from that moment on. I hope that helps you have a great day.